want to talk about Ben Affleck defending an interview. Greg, why don't you tell us about the video we're going to watch? Yeah, so a couple of weeks ago, Ben Affleck went on a two-hour interview with Howard Stern. He talked about his breakup with his ex-wife and family, and he had some fallout from it, so here we go. Here he is, Ben Affleck! Snoop Dogg. Yet another indignity. <laughs> I thought at least I come this far. Thank you, you know. for being here. I know you're very busy promoting the Tender Bar. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's like, I, I love this movie. It's really about stuff that's uh, really close to my heart. It's about, I mean, it's about how the heroic work of single moms and how important dads are and about how, like, whatever the kind of constellation of your family is and how flawed you are, sort of, you have to work through this stuff and be present in kids' lives and love them and give them a sense of, of self-worth uh, so that they can sort of be uh, good, happy, healthy people, you know? And it's, it's been a lot of fun. And the soundtrack is really good, too. <laughs> it is yeah. a good yeah. soundtrack. Yes. <laughs> you make it sound so serious. But I love this movie, Thank too. Uh, you. I didn't it, you know, read but any is, of that stuff. It is, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it is... It, it, it's so close to my heart. I had a chance to do uh, an interview with a friend of yours, Howard Stern. I he listened to you. Really cool, like long form, in depth. You know, it's a two hour interview, and because the movie is about family and all this stuff that's that's meaningful to me, we talked a lot about my family and you know divorce and alcoholism and struggling with real things and how you how you have to be accountable and loving. And how I work with my ex wife and how I'm so proud of the way that we work together for our kids, the best that we can for them and. I, it was the irony. I was really happy with it. You know, I ended the it interview. Was a I was great thrilled. interview. Thrilled. I thought, wow, I, I should do more honest, exploratory, you know, self-evaluating things. And I started seeing all this stuff come up on Twitter, and I was like, well, what is this? And I sort of researched through it, and then saw that one of these websites had done the the clickbait thing of like, you won't believe what he said. Click on this. Come to our site. Right. And I looked on it, and they had literally taken the conversation that I had had for two hours and made it seem as if I was saying the exact opposite of what I said. I had gone on and said, like, how much we respect each other and cared about each other and cared about our kids and put them first and went through our stuff. And he said that I had blamed my ex-wife for my alcoholism and that I was trapped in this marriage. Like, just made me out to be, like, the worst, most insensitive, stupid, awful guy. And I... Look, I, I know people do this, I get it. Me, I'm happy to be sad Batman. I'm happy to be Dunkin' Donuts and the meme. I, I understand you have, you have to get married to Jimmy Kimmel sometimes. <laughs> really, like, it's about my kids, I gotta just draw a line. Right, you know, of course. I'm really clear, like, that's not true. I don't believe that. It's the exact opposite of who I am, what I believe, and I would never want my kids to think I would ever say a bad word about their mom because this I really upset you. I mean, obviously, it hurts my feelings, yeah. Right? yeah I, I noticed that. I saw that online, and it was crazy that they take this tiny little piece and then they and uh, wait, are you saying the media sometimes takes things out of context for occasionally effect? Yeah. But it feels like it used to be like you know, okay. You know, you slept with the prostitute, you had to go on the talk show and say, like, well, you know, and be, right. you know, the famous thing. Is that what thing. you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is going to be some clickbait tomorrow. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and then you have but to then, be one of... But now it's like you can have the most pleasant, honest, real conversation and be kind of vulnerable. And no matter what you say, you, someone can just they say, make well, you here regret are the three it. words, put it up there. And I know we've all read the thing, you won't believe it, what, what they said. And you, you go on it, and mm -hmm. inevitably you're disappointed. Because right. you're like, oh, I thought I was going to read something horrible and scandalous and negative, right. and this is right. just boring. But And even being the subject of that is just sort of the cost of doing business a little bit as an actor. But, like, not with my kids. Don't do that. It's wrong. It hurts me. Yeah, and your family. Them. Stop yeah. that. It's all right, Chase, what do you got? Right here, when he said he was talking about the movie, at every key point, that he wants to loop into his talk about all the media issues. He's saying that's what the movie's about. I read the synopsis. It's not that much about that. And when he says the words, good, happy, healthy people, uh, good, happy, healthy people. I think that's, that's a strong point right there. His eyes shift down and to his left, which suggests that a person is entering some internal dialogue. They're talking to themselves. 
He tosses his hands and notice the difference between him tossing his hands out and this kind of cradle gesture that he uses before that. And you'll be able to spot it when he uses it. And they can sort of be this kind of person. So he starts to use the word sort of, which uh, to, to his defense, the word sort of has become a filler word in somehow American English. It's just sort of become mainstream sort of. Then he goes into a full shoulder shrug and his face almost goes into a wince. So throughout this whole thing, there's a ton of regulators. He's stopping Jimmy from talking at every point, almost. Kimmel starts talking. This huge open arm gesture comes out to, to, to make him stop. And there's a ton of other regulators he's using with his body to, to keep Kimmel from talking. I think it's interesting that he is very expressive with his hands and he's very articulate in expressing himself with his hands and noting that he punches his hand, his fist into his hand, exactly at the word loving, right when he's saying the word loving. I think that's an interesting point there. But his, when he says the word ex-wife, that's the furthest his hand travels away from his body throughout the entire thing. Then Kimmel starts talking again. You'll see a full stop gesture when our fingers extend all the way. You'll see that from him. And then he, uh, when he's talking about the Twitter stuff, he's holding the phone. He's holding an imaginary phone, which tells us that he narrates stories really well and with precision with his hand movements. But when he says clickbait, it's the same hand gesture as the ex-wife. When he says uh, insensitive, stupid, awful, those three words, same exact hand gestures. So clickbait, ex-wife, and insensitive, stupid, awful. He uses the exact same hand gesture. So we're looking at individual things here, not just some body language from uh, an online article. So finally uh, here, he's explaining uh, this article is the exact opposite of who he is and what he believes. And we see a blink rate, which is how often a person blinks and his average for his media appearances is 21. His blink rate goes up to near a hundred. And I think it was 98 and a high blink rate suggests a high degree of stress. And I think there is a, some stress here with him describing that. And secondly here, uh, there's a pepper grinder gesture that he makes uh, throughout this at a few different key points and one of you guys might cover it, but if you spot what those points are and how they might be related, let us know in the comments. And we do read them. So any, overall, he exerts a very powerful control over the conversation to ensure that his message is out there. And he uses his body uh, to stop Kimmel from talking almost the entire time. Scott, what do you got? All right. Uh, usually these things follow a structure. When you're going to be on a, on a talk show, you walk out and you give the little wave after you hug the, the host, and then you go sit down and you adjust and get ready for it. So up to that point, everything's going smoothly, I think. He's nervous. He looks a little bit nervous, as anyone would be going on a talk show, or most anyone would be going on a talk show. But when he sits down, he does this big adjustment once he sits down. I see a lot of adjusting in here. He completely skips the small talk. There's no, there's no, no little, hey, what's been going on? Man? What are you doing? No, none of that at all. He just gets right into the movie part of it, which is sort of uncomfortable because it's, it seems so soon. But again, he's nervous because he's, you know, everybody thinks he said something horrible about his ex-wife and his kids are watching and all that. And he's got to straighten all that out. He uses these big illustrators, big gestures, but they're very close and they're really stiff. They don't, they don't move very smoothly at all at first. So, and you're right, Chase, when he starts talking about his wife, his hand starts going, that's when you see it go the furthest. And, but the more he starts talking about his family, the wider his, his gestures get and they get a little, bit, a little bit more smooth or smoother, however you would say it grammatically correct. And when he gets mad or he's, he's hiding that anger or that uh, aggression, then you see him get tighter as his elbows get closer to his chest as he's talking about that. Um, he's probably embarrassed, I'm sure, when he starts talking about the, the problems like with alcoholism, because when he says, and discussing my alcoholism, he doesn't whisper that much, but he does, it gets really, really quiet when he does that. Buy some stickers. <laughs> then, um, 
then, then, then he gets to a point where he starts the whole thing again. It's that uncomfortable thing. Everything's really small. Then everything starts to get big again. And his gestures get, get really large and much smoother than they were at the very first. When he talks about being in memes, like being the sad Batman and those kind of things, his illustrators get really big, but they get really smooth because he, he, that's funny. And he understands that's funny. And, and with the structure of this, everything seems to be going fine. Now, when he gets to the part where he talks about where everybody, where Twitter is talking about how bad he is and, and whoever else is talking about how bad he is, this is when we see that, that anger being him holding back that aggression and anger at that point, because he's, that's when he starts that twisting thing Chase was talking about earlier. I can't remember which, which specific words he's talking about, but that's when he starts those things. And, um, as he goes along, he, he slows down and he's, and with his, his illustrators, he hits every word for every point he wants to make. And he makes a little snake thing and that little chopping movement right there. So that makes sure every point he wants to make gets made in that, in that one section. That's the reason he's here is this for, is for this section. Jimmy Kill did a great job because dealing with someone who's so uncomfortable as he is during this, and it's got to be just the worst at that point, he does such a good job of making him laugh and making the audience feel okay about what's happening because it's obvious this guy's really nervous, as anyone would be in this situation. So I think he did a good job uh, getting all of his points across. And I think I think he tried to follow the structure. He got it, but he was so focused on what he, what he wanted to say, he couldn't be, you know, hey, I'm here and talking to you all because he rarely looks at the audience, except when he gets down to his point and starts that chopping stuff. That's when he sort of the first time he really connects with the audience. And he doesn't look at Jimmy Kimmel that often. He doesn't connect with him, doesn't lock eyes with him very often at all. Again, that's from nerves. Doesn't mean whether he said these things they're saying or not, or whether he did or didn't, but it just shows he's being really nervous. He's really up, uh, really uptight about what's going on at this point. Okay, uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I, I think any of us who go into the situation where we're defending something we've said are gonna have some apprehension as we go in. And we're seeing some of that in his body language. I'll also say he clearly has in his mind what he is going to deliver at which time. And if you pay attention to that, you'll see telegraphing at times what's coming. He starts off by talking, and, and Chase, I'm with you, 100%. When he starts off talking about good and happy and love and healthy and mom and dad, those words are stressed. You have to work through this stuff and be present in kids' lives and love them and give them a sense of, of self-worth so that they can sort of be... Uh, good, happy, healthy people. And he has a specific normal speech pattern he's following. The things that he cares about, he, he speaks more loudly and he emphasizes those syllables a little more. And we see that as a setup, I think as a setup to what's coming next where he has to talk about that. When he starts down the path, my favorite regulator, and you hit some really good ones, my favorite regulator in the entire thing is when he takes his hand and he places it on the desk to stop the conversation so he can transition to what he came to talk about. And that regulator is really powerful. When he's talking up until then, his hands are in front of his face. He does, when he's something negative, his hand does move off to the side, but most of the time his hands are in his field of vision, which I associate with someone being mostly honest. People who are doing their hands out over here or over there to get out of the picture, I usually think, hmm, something's up here, but he's illustrating his thoughts. That structured transition he came to deliver when he puts his hand on that desk, he does a, kind of an awkward barrier and he leans back when he does it as well. His forehead goes up like a request for approval when he says a friend of yours and he's talking about Howard Stern, of course. And then we see it again as he starts talking. We, we see regulators again as he starts to touch the desk talking about um, it was a long, good conversation. He's talking about a lot of things that mattered. He shows some emotion and concern and some concern in his brow when he's talking about the relationship and how it ended. What I think this is, is the work we did to try to make things happen. When he talks about getting through the situation with her and working on making the relationship work, then when he gets to other, one or other hard place, he twists his hands. I think that's work. I think it's his brain working. His messaging still congruent. My favorite two things in the entire video, and I could, could have just stopped here, is request for approval. It, that's not true. That's not true. His brow is up. That's not true. And he immediately transitions and goes to the exact opposite with his brow down. That's not who I am telling. I think that tells me what his intent was when his words came out of his mouth was not what people have perceived it to be. That's what I see in his messaging. His elbows are open away from his body. 
and he even reaches over for some water, which we usually associate with being stressed. I'll leave it at that and say, oh, the, the last one, Chase, is I love your body narration thing. He's doing Twitter, moving his hand on the phone, all of that. It's a beautiful thing. So that's what I got. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so lots happening here because he does gesture uh, a lot. He does really perform and illustrate and, uh, you know, draw pictures of what he's talking about. But he's an easy one to baseline because he's been on a whole bunch of other chat shows, including Kimmel a bunch of times. So I went back, took a, lot of, uh, took a look at, at some of those. He would tend to normally walk on way prouder, way taller big smile on his face, a lot of confidence. Whereas here, he kind of ambles on a little bit, downcast eyes, lots of shoulder shrugs as he kind of ambles along, kind of moving from this shoulder area rather than his center of gravity kind of cutting through, through the air. So a lot less powerful than he'd normally be. Uh, an eyebrow raised to the audience as he sees them, that look of, uh, you recognize me, it's, it's, it's me. So a look of approval may be there as well. It seems like he's coming on uh, with maybe a little bit of shame, a little bit of an apology, maybe a bit of sorrow. Uh, as, as Kimmel says later on, maybe an element of regret that he comes on with. So unusual for him. And Chase, I think he has that uh, New York chin boss um, movement. I can't remember what. What is it you call that? Or it was called by by the, some. Uh, the researchers called it a shared grief expression. Lovely, lovely. A shared grief expression. I think he has that as he as he comes on uh, as well. Anyway, so he sits down and and not so many illustrators right from the start, but he gets to close to my heart. And at that, the po that's the point when he talks about, as everybody said, mums, dads, families, that he starts to get more gregarious. You see him, uh, this idea of, of holding up his children when he talks about sense of self-worth. So that thing of he as the father is there to support that sense of self-work. He gives a hit there in a place that we maybe wouldn't want to expect it. There is this twisting gesture that we see as well. Uh, it's interesting in, in, in watches, uh, the more complicated the watch gets, you call it a complication within the uh, within the mechanism. And so it is this kind of thing of twists and cogs moving, because I think that, you know, what he's talking about is how complex, how complicated, how frustrating maybe, you know, dealing with this situation of, of families and and uh, and mothers uh, and and uh, is for him. Uh, interesting that, that when he talks about the exact opposite, he doesn't do the exact opposite. There's this, the positive and the negative. He flattens out the gesture. He goes the exact opposite. So he does what I would say is a, a flattening or negation gesture around that. So, so he, uh, he, his opposition to this, I think, is a is a negation. He wants it negated. What was said? Uh, oh, actually, before that, talks about that he was proud of what he said, or he was proud of the interview, and he goes down and he touches his ankle. Interesting, an exposed an exposed joint, a long way from his body, and he goes to kind of almost self soothe or protect down there at the ankle. Um, I agree with what everybody's saying there. Uh, worst insensitive, stupid guy, and he puts that person at over at arm's length, same place where he's put his ex-wife as well, same place as where he's put Twitter. So he really wants to say, you know, those bad ideas are at arm's length to me. Uh, quite an emphatic denial linguistically um a lot of aggression comes up from his well you're seeing a lot of kind of lower teeth from him uses the water as a barrier and calms himself so i think the aggression is growing with him we see some pointing gestures there so real aggression um i i love his cost of doing business gesture as well it's it's a little brush away gesture so he brushes away look i don't mind i don't mind the odd twitter thing that's the cost of doing business but then stop that he do goes back to that negate chop gesture to taste stop that we see bottom teeth in anger closed eyes as well that you tend to get when you're getting targeted and somebody's going into some kind of violent action the eyes will close and targeting stop that that's not the right thing to do 
quite aggressive there uh, at the end. So Amble's on at the start, very regretful, I think, but then gets quite aggressive uh, at the end towards the social media or the, the media agency that in his mind has created this um, short form version of what he said, which is the opposite of what he believes he said. There, that's what I got for you on that one. Here he is, Ben the Flick. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. Yet another indignity. <laughs> you know, I thought at least I come this far. Thank you, you know. for being here. I know you're very busy promoting the Tender Bar. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's like, I, I love this movie. It's really about stuff that's uh, really close to my heart. It's about, I mean, it's about how the heroic work of single moms and how important dads are and about how, like, whatever the kind of constellation of your family is and how flawed you are, sort of, you have to work through this stuff and be present in kids' lives and love them and give them a sense of, of self-worth uh, so that they can sort of be uh, good, happy, healthy people, you know? And it's, it's been a lot of fun. And the soundtrack is really good, too. <laughs> it is yeah. a good yeah. soundtrack, yes. <laughs> You make it sound so serious. But I love this movie, Thank too. Uh, you. I didn't it, you know, read but any is, of that stuff. It is, yeah. uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is... It is so close to my heart. I had a chance to do uh, an interview with a friend of yours, Howard Stern. I he listened to you. Really cool, like long form, in depth. You know, it's a two hour interview, and because the movie is about family and all this stuff that's that's meaningful to me, we talked a lot about my family and you know divorce and alcoholism and struggling with real things and how you how you have to be accountable and loving. And how I work with my ex wife and how I'm so proud of the way that we work together for our kids, the best that we can for them and. Uh, was the irony is I was really happy with it. You know, I ended the it interview. Was a I was great thrilled. interview. Thrilled. I thought, wow, I, I should do more honest, exploratory, you know, self-evaluating things. And I started seeing all this stuff come up on Twitter, and I was like, well, what is this? And I sort of researched through it, and then saw that one of these websites had done the the clickbait thing of like, you won't believe what he said. Click on this, come to our site. Right. And I looked on it, and they had literally taken the conversation that I had had for two hours and made it seem as if I was saying the exact opposite of what I said. I had gone on and said like how much we respect each other and cared about each other and cared about our kids and put them first and went through our stuff. And he said that I had blamed my ex-wife for my alcoholism and that I was trapped in this marriage. Like just made me out to be like the worst, most insensitive, stupid, awful guy. And I, look, I, I know people do this, I get it. Me, I'm happy to be sad Batman. I'm happy to be Dunkin' Donuts and the meme. I, I understand. <laughs> You have, you have to get married to Jimmy Kimmel sometime. <laughs> really, like, it's about my kids. I got to just draw a line. Right, you know, of course. I'm really clear. Like, that's not true. I don't believe that. It's the exact opposite of who I am, what I believe, and I would never want my kids to think I would ever say a bad word about their mom. because This I really upset you. I mean, obviously. That hurts my feelings, yeah. man. Yeah. Did you guys see that part where his head goes back and he his arms come up and it's when he's transitioning from one thing to something else and he gets he gets all squishy. It's just it's almost uncomfortable. Well, for sure, it's more. very different from what you see him normally do yeah. in interview in these yeah. kind of interviews. So different. Yeah. Well, I, I love the one chin jut. I left it out too because that, that yeah. when you talk about showing teeth, there's a profound yeah. chin jut of frustration or anger there you can't he's talking about his kids or something there at that at that point yes yeah he's saying leave my kids alone uh, it's not who i am yeah his chin juts yeah. out pretty hard yeah right. yeah i think right. the most uncertainty that i saw here uh where we saw a big spike in uncertainty is when he was communicating about how he's raising his kids that's the highest level of uncertainty there uh, where we saw the most shoulder shrugs, the up talk, the request for approval with the eyebrows going up, all of the uncertainty, not all of it, most of the uncertainty was probably right there. And I think he had a crystal clear message and he wanted to pull people along into that story. So he starts talking about clickbait and how we can all relate to that. One of those clickbait things. So he did pretty well in pulling people into the story. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a that's a tough. My guess is some of his uncertainty there will be about mentioning his kids again, <laughs> because that's that's the issue. If you go and mention your kids, it's very hard for the media not to mention your kids. 
you know, you just did it, Chase. I just did it. Well, why? Because he mentioned them. I didn't bring them up. He decided yeah. to, to talk about them. And so, unfortunately, they become part of the media fodder that, that's out there. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, let's uh, roll around the room one time and sort of give a wrap up. If we can do 30 seconds or less, and let's see what happens. Mark, you go for, we'll go from Mark to Chase to Greg. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so biggest thing for me is just how different this is from his usual interview. Usually comes on powerful, confident, big smile, you know, one of those people that you want to be around. And now we've got somebody who is sorrowful, regretful, and even touching his ankle as uh, as a as a barrier uh, gesture of of feeling unconfident. So very very different from his usual um, showbiz self. Uh, Chase, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think he he had a message he wanted to push forward. He came out and. I think he was so determined to do it that he just kind of bulldozed through Kimmel. We could see that with all the body language, the gestures, the behaviors, and everything communicates that there was a very sh sharp message that he wanted to put out there. But I think overall, uh, mostly honest. All the behaviors, since we're kind of a lie detection team, this was mostly honest. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I think when a guy goes out and he's promoting a movie, he's going to make great eye contact. When he has good things to talk about, he's going to make great eye contact. He's going to try to romance the, the audience, if you will. When you're apologizing or defending something you've said, exactly the opposite. You're going to feel shame or whatever it is. Even if he did not intend for people to perceive it that way, he's now got to do damage control. And he's running around doing this now. I think we see that. We see stress in him. But we see honesty mostly. I agree with you guys. All the body language in front of him is about positive things and negative is over here. That's the way we all talk. So I see mostly mostly honest here. And I think he's trying to do the right thing. And there will be fallout for him and he realizes it. Scott, what do you got? All right. Yeah, I agree with all that. And if you set this thing up like if it was in song form, because these things are structured, and we cut the song in half and didn't worry about the bridge or anything. He comes out with his intro. He come, that's when he comes out and says hi and all that. It's a little bit nervous. Then he sits down, like Chase was saying, just bowls right through and it starts talking about the movie. So that's sort of like your verse part there. And they go they go through and bat around a couple other things about the, the, the uh, soundtrack and some other stuff. And then when the chorus comes up, he gets in there and digs real hard on the points he wants to make, the reason he's there, really hardcore. And then so the end would be uh, where he brings it to a crescendo and uh, it cuts off with everybody clapping at the end. So I think it was it was structurally, it was all there, but it was all just kind of squished down in, into a very short amount of time from him being so nervous. But then again, I think Jimmy Kimmel handled, handled it very well because that's that's got to be tough to, to deal with that, with somebody who's, uh, they're not trying to take over, but they, they don't know what to do at that point. So his his molding that and kind of keeping him in, in, the, in the right lane, that's got to be tough to do. All right. Well, that's another good one, fellas, and uh, I'll see you next time. Oh, subscribe. Yeah. Be sure. And, I forget every time. Be sure and subscribe. I'm going to say, I don't know, I'm going to say, I don't know, I'm going to say, I don't know.